I really don't like this question. Um, it's not that bad, but like there's an easy way to do it, but most people don't see the easy way and they kind of just like get lost completely in the question. Um, so I'm going to do it the long way first because I want to show you how you can kind of get unstuck if you're just like not seeing what to do here because there are some clues that are going to come up on all sorts of questions um, that we need to make sure we're looking out for. So if we look at the question, the, the key word here is going to be this phrase, constant rate. So the equipment depreciates in value at a constant rate for 12 years. That is a kind of like get back to basics phrase. It reminds us that we're probably dealing with a y equals mx plus b equation. It's a line. Constant rate means we have a line. And so if I, if I were confused, I would write y equals mx plus b on my page, and I would try my best to fill in the information. So what do I know? Well, I, I can see the b pretty easily, right? b, when we have uh, a story, is kind of like the starting point. And it's telling us that it starts at a value of uh, 32,400. So, okay, that's my, my B. Um, <laughs> it's a big number, but it's okay. We also would love, we would love to know the, the slope, but we don't really have that. What we have instead is a point. We know that at 12 years, uh, it has no value. So that is a, that's a point, okay? That, that's an X and a Y that we can plug in. We don't have the rate of depreciation. We just have a spot in the process of depreciation where we know the value. So we know that when uh, 12 years have passed, its value is zero. So that means Y is zero, M is uncertain, and 12 is our value of x. So, actually let's put that in red just to be clear that this is our constant rate. This is the thing we want to know for now. And that's the thing with y equals mx plus b is if we have four, if we it's four parts, if we have three of those parts, we can always find the fourth. And so not really knowing why that might help me, I'm going to do it anyway because I have a, a task. This is why I don't like this question. Is I, this is it's getting a little messy, but it's doable. So if I clean this up a bit, what I would do is I'd uh, I'd move thirty two thousand four hundred over to here, um, and I would then have the that equal to twelve m, and I got to divide by twelve to get m by itself. So it means I'm doing one of my least favorite things long division. So 32,400. Sometimes you have to do it in the SAT, so you got to know how to do it. Here's the way to do it. 12 goes into 32, 2 times. 2 times 12 is 24. We subtract and we get 8. Then we drop the 4. And uh, 12 goes into 84 7 times. We might need to count that in our heads, but um, there you go. 7 times 12 is 84. And so that's a zero, and then we've got some zeros dropping, so 2,700. And it's a negative. So what does this mean? This means that my slope is negative $2,700, meaning every year this thing is losing $2,700. Now what? <laughs> well, we want to know how much it's worth four years after it's purchased. So that's something we can plug in. So if we go back to our y equals mx plus b equation. Now we have a sense of what it, it is. It's y is equal to negative 2700x plus 32,400. Now we can plug that 4 in for x. And that means we're still going to need to do some annoying math. 2700 times 4 to put that in there. Four times zero is zero, four times zero is zero, four times seven is 28, four times two is eight, nine, 10, 10,800. However, even though that's an answer choice, that's a trap because that's 
the amount that it is losing in four years, and I need to figure out how much is left. So when I put that in, now it's y is equal to 10,800 negative plus 32,400, which means we subtract the 10,800, 0, 0, 6, 1, 2. And we get C. Yeah, this is rough. So this is not the ideal way to do it. Um, but I wanted to show it because I, I just think that this is actually the more important skill for the SAT in general. For this question, it turns out to be a bit of a pain in the neck. But for the SAT in general, when we see phrases like constant rate, <clears throat> when we see phrases like constant rate, we've got to latch onto that and use that as a clue to start thinking about lines. And yeah, the numbers got messy here, but the process worked. So we, we get an answer. And so that's why, you know, the no calculator section, being good at arithmetic, being able to do division and multiplication and, and addition very quickly and efficiently, uh, you know, it can save you in a place where you're kind of confused otherwise. Let's talk about though, the, the simple way that that could save us. Well, the key to the whole question is that four years is a fraction of 12 years. What's the fraction? So if it is, how much is the camera equipment worth four years after it's purchased? So four out of 12 is the same as one third. Meaning that since it's a constant rate, in four years, it's gonna lose a third of its value. In another four years, so eight total years, it'll lose the second third. And then in 12 years, three thirds, it's going to be worth zero. So really what we wanna do is take one third of 32,400. And so again, we were kinda of doing some division here. Three goes, it's a little easier though. Three goes into three once, uh, three goes into two, zero times. So I'm gonna do short division here. Three goes into 24, eight, and zero, zero. So there's that number again, 10,800, which again is a, is a trap answer choice. And this is why you gotta really be careful no matter what way you do it. So that again is the amount that it loses after four years. It's losing a third. So what's its value after four years? It's two thirds of the value. So we can do subtraction, we can do um, multiplication here. I'm gonna just do subtraction because that's what I did before. Actually, I don't even need to do it, you get it. It's literally now we would just do the same subtraction that we did before, 32,400 minus 10,800 and we would get the right answer, 21,600. I don't know. I think that both of these ways are challenging. Um, one of them maybe is math mathematically easier, but I think it's more difficult to notice and to get there. So in the spirit of like, you wanna keep moving, unless this purple way comes to you within 10 seconds, you can't keep staring at the question hoping it does. You have to get moving and Y equals MX plus B gives us a way to get going and to start doing stuff. Um, that's always better than staring at a question. The get back to basic strategy is about that. It's about noticing the basic thing that's at the heart of the question so you can start doing something with it. Even if you're not sure how it's gonna end, you at least have a plan and you can kind of cobble it together. If someone has a better way, share it in the comments. I'd be curious, but I don't really think there's a good one here. I think we're kind of stuck dealing with big numbers, and that's kind of the point of the question, is to scare us with big numbers and a weird story and hope that we kind of just give up before we try. And uh, we don't wanna do that. We're still in middle of the road territory here, so uh, it, it's, it's not something you wanna kinda just give up on. There's gonna be harder stuff to come, so you wanna try to do what you can to get these points. And I know it's frustrating, but get back to basics and at least you've got a shot.